Hi and welcome to Geeks for Geeks. I am Siddharth Hazra. I'm an SD at Geeks for Geeks. Besides that, I'm also a candidate master and an ACM ICPC regionalist. So let's talk about today's problem. Today we would be discussing the problem number of path in a matrix with k coins. Now the prerequisite of this problem is recursion and dynamic programming. The takeaway from this problem is that you need to be good with observing the constraints and all. Let's discuss the problem. So in this problem, you are given a matrix like 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 5, 3, 2, 1. And the size of the matrix would be n cross n. Okay. Now, top left, bottom right. Okay. Top left corner to bottom right. And you will also be given a value of k. Let's say the value of k here is 12. Now you need to find out ways in which the sum of the values is equal to exactly k. Neither less, neither more. That means equal to k. So the very first one is 1, 2, 6, 2, 1. one and you can only move right and down okay so the very first one is one two and then two six and then six two and then two one what is the sum of this one plus two plus six is equals to nine nine plus two is equals to eleven eleven plus two is equals to twelve so this gives me one out now let's talk about the very next one the very next one is 1, 2, 3, like it is 1, 2, 3, and then we have 5 and 1. So if you observe, what is the sum of this? 1 plus 2, 3, 3 plus 3, 6, 6 plus 5, 11, 11 plus 1 is equals to 2. So these are, there are, these are the two ways you can reach from top left to bottom right by only moving in the right hand side and the bottom direction and the sum of the values is this okay so the e easiest thing that you can think of is number of path in the matrix which is a very standard problem that you would try all possible ways you would try all possible ways and all the ways which give me the value as k would be the result would be taken into account this seems fine but the problem would occur in memoization okay like we would be memoizing the result like what are the result that we like if we talk about this we would be talking about the current index so current index, let's say the current index is x and y and the sum up till now. So sum up till now. Sum up till now. So if you want to memoize these three, then the maximum value of x can be what? 100. The maximum value can of x can range from 0 to 100. So we need 101 space. Y would be the same because n multiplied by n, n cross n. Okay, this is fine. And then we have the sum. Now the sum can be the maximum sum out of the array. So that would be 200 multiplied by 200 multiplied by 100 multiplied by 100. And that would be 2 to the power 2 multiplied by 10 to the power 6. Okay. And this would be a very large array. Okay. These all values can accommodate. But, but, but. What you can do is. You can see the problem other way around. Like. Let's say. I start off with the value. Here I have. So this is the problem that would occur. 
like we need a matrix of 101 cross 101 cross 2 multiplied by 10 to the power 6. Now I observe a different thing. But here it is given k is equals to 100. So what I can think of is I need to use 100. Then it is feasible. So now let's try to think in terms of k. This is the intuition. This is how we are building out the intuition. Okay. Now what we can do is. So now there are two ways. Let me just tell you the intuition of it. Now there are two ways. First we start with zero money. And then we gain money on each day. And the end of the day if we are at k money. We would say this is a plus one quantity. Good enough. The other way around of this problem is. That we start off with k. And whenever we reach any value, we subtract that value. Let's say it is A, then minus B. At the end, if we reach zero value, then it is also the same. Like we reach from zero to K or K to zero. Like here we are adding. Let's say add A, add B, add C. At the end, it became K. So we say, yes, this is a valid solution. The other way around can be at each point, we would subtract the value. And at the end, if we reach the value zero, then the sum is also k. Like what I meant is, let's understand it better. Okay. So let's say this value is 3, 4, 7. This value is 3, 4, 7. And the value that needs to be attained is 7 plus 4 is equals to 14. So see, 0 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 plus 7 is equals to 14 so I would say plus 1 other thing I can do is I can start with 14 and I can subtract 14 minus 3 11 11 minus 4 is equals to 7 7 minus 7 is equals to 0 so if I reach 0 I can again add 1 seems simple so what we would be doing is instead of starting with the sum as 0 we would be starting with the sum as k and we would subtract each instance. And rest this problem is number of path in a matrix. Okay. This is a small thing we would be doing. So in the implementation. Now let's move to the implementation. Now this is the crux of the solution that was needed. So if you already know dynamic programming and you were here for this. Like I wanted to make it as crisp as possible. Okay. Let's move back to the implementation. So now let's design the recursive function. So this recursive function would also return long long as the same. And then let's name this function as rex. So we would get hold of this array. And we would pass this by reference and we would name it as a r r and then we would have the value of int x and int y okay and then we would have the value of int n and int k at the end like whatever is coming from here we would see here okay now comes the part so if any invalid index is there so we have if x is less than 0, first invalid index or y is less than 0, second because the indexes can never be negative. If x is greater than equal to n or y is greater than equal to n, then we would return the value of 0. Fair enough. Then if we have reached the very bottom we have reached the very bottom. So that value should be equal to the remaining x value. Like what I meant to say is. We see this value. See. The value of x is equal to 12. So we come across this. We subtract 1. 11. Then we come across this. We subtract this. Then we come across this. We subtract this. Then we come across this. We subtract this. Then subtract 2. It would become 1. So the last value remaining should be equal to the last value that is remaining at k. So if we are at the last index and it is equal to the value remaining at k, then we would say yes, it is possible, else it is not possible. 
So if we are at the last index, last index is equals to what? If x is equals to equals to n minus one and y is equals to equals to n minus one, we are at the last corner index. What is the bottom right? If we are at the bottom right index, okay, we would first say x minus equals to a of x dash y. First, we would subtract it or we can directly check it also to be honest. But let's go with the flow that we did. Okay. Now, if k is equals to equals to 0, return 1. Else, we would return 0. No, this is not possible. Okay. Like after all of this, let's start with this. So we would declare an int answer. Okay. Int answer. And then we would say that's not not int answer. It should be long, long answer. Long, long answer. Okay. Now we have two possible ways to go from a particular index. So first let us go to the right. If we go to the right, it is 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2 the yth value would increase that is y plus 1. So answer is equal to so let's just write long long left or and let's just add it answer plus equals to rec of a what we got then x would remain the same y would increase the value of n would also remain the same and k would increase. So we would say k minus a of i dash k of x dash y. Okay. Good enough. Then answer plus equals to rec of this time x would increase if we go down x would increase x axis would increase a comma x plus 1 comma y y would remain the same and then n comma k minus a of x dash y and then we would return the value of the answer okay this is the recursive solution so if we want to memoize it, we would just memoize it. What are the, how to memoize it? See how to memoize it. The idea is very simple. What are the dynamic variables? This variable is not changing. Whatever is coming, it's going the same. X axis is changing, Y axis is changing and K axis is changing. K is changing. So we would declare here long, long int dp of 101 because x size is 100 101 and k is also 100 so 101 okay we would initialize everything with minus 1 so mem set of dp comma minus 1 comma size of dp this is just to set all the values of the dp array as minus 1 so before the recursive solution before the recursive solution i would say if dp of x dash y dash k is not equal to minus 1, we would return dp of x dash y dash k. Okay, before the return and just before the return part, we would save the result of the dp if we are seeing of the result dp of x dot i is equals to answer. Now, this seems pretty fine. Let's just handle it also. If at any point x becomes negative, x is less than 0, return 0. Okay, now let's call it return rec of a r r comma 0 comma 0 comma n comma k. So now let us see how many errors are we making. Okay, seems like no error is being made.
and yes we got an ac that's it for today thank you and have a nice day